In the notes in chapter 5, you heard me mention angles lots of times. And that's really what we're going to be looking at here in section 6.1. I kind of gave away the punchline of, uh, of what we were looking at. So, normally if we think of an angle, you've got two straight lines, you've got some measurement there, measure with a protractor or something like that. A lot of the times, you'll see the angles denoted with that variable. That's Greek letter theta. That's a pretty awful way to write theta. But as I rewrite that, we want to talk about how these angles can be realized, not just in terms of the shape that I've drawn here, but relating it back to triangles. Now you're probably used to angles as having some kind of a degree measure. Uh, you know, something like maybe this is 37 degrees or, or something like that. But a cleaner way to measure these things is to think of it as if I was to start here and I rotated this line until it hit there, how far did I have to travel? It's really this distance, this length of an arc that we're considering when we think about what this 37 degrees or 48 degrees, whatever you want, whatever it really means. But you'll notice and it's the length of an arc, right? We spent all the last chapter talking about measurements of lengths of arcs when you come in to the unit circle. And the unit circle allows us to get away from this notion of degrees, which is a little bit arbitrary, and to get something more concrete. So, I could measure everything in degrees. There are 360 degrees in a circle. Now, I'm not a huge fan of degrees because how do you break them apart into smaller pieces? Well, you can break degrees up into minutes, and there's 60 minutes in a degree, and you can break minutes up into seconds, and there's 60 seconds in a minute. It gets complicated, which is why mathematicians tend to use radians. You'll probably see this on your calculator. Sometimes you see a little button that looks like that. Or you'll see something that looks like that. To switch between degree mode and radian mode. You'll want to be careful if you're using your calculator to estimate functions in this class, estimate values, that you're in the correct mode. Most of the time, unless we're specifically asking you to switch between degrees and radians, we're going to be doing things in radians. And for those of you moving on uh, into a calculus course, everything will be in radians. That's, that's just the common measurement that we like to use. But if I want to use radians, what I'm really looking at is to say, okay, if I was to take my unit circle and I'm going to place it in what's called standard position. So if I've got an angle like this, some angle theta that I'm trying to measure, I'm going to take one side of the angle and I'm going to put that along the x-axis in the unit circle. And then I'm going to take the other piece of the angle, extend that out until it hits the unit circle, and there's my angle theta. Now you can stretch these things out, you know, keep stretching them out as far as you want, but it's not going to change the angle. So it's fine to shrink these things down so they're of length one and fit inside the unit circle. You're going to get the same, uh, the same angle. So for this angle theta, in radian measure, we're looking at that length. So, as we've measured these things in the previous section, radian measure is actually going to be to get an angle which starts here, rotates out to here. The radian measure of that angle is how far I had to travel along the outside of the unit circle. That's what theta actually means. 
in radians. I can give you a couple of examples. We can do some of our standard ones. If I had that angle, theta, I need to travel from there out to there. We traveled one-fourth of the way around the unit circle, and we know from what we did in our previous section that the distance traveled from here to here is pi over 2. So this angle theta is pi over 2. Similarly, if I started my standard position there, I revolved all the way around until I got down to there. So my angle theta is actually that entire distance. Well, how far did I go? Again, from our previous section, 3 pi over 2. And it works just as well with negative values. I was to start here, but instead of heading off counterclockwise, I headed clockwise. Traveled that direction to make that straight line. In this case, theta is negative pi, because I've traveled clockwise starting from my standard position. Now we can convert between radians and degrees, which I know some of you will like to do, especially if you've had a uh, more than a passing familiarity with degrees, it helps to be able to convert to sort of build this intuition. So what we know is that if I start with the unit circle. If I wanted to take the measure of the entire unit circle, so if I started there, traveled the entire distance around to get back where I started, that was my angle theta. We know that length is 2 pi. But we also know that in an entire circle, we get 360 degrees. So 2 pi radians equals 360 degrees, or pi radians equals 180 degrees. And if you divide these out, we get 1 radian equals 180 degrees over pi, and 1 degree equals pi over 180 radians. So if we want to convert degrees into radians, start with something in degrees, multiply by pi over 180, you'll get the value in radians. If you want to convert from radians to degrees, start with something in radians, multiply by 180 over pi, that'll convert it to degrees. So for example, if I took 60 degrees and I wanted to convert that into radians, I would have 60 degrees multiplied by pi over 180 in radians, pi over 3 radians. And similarly, if I started with, say, pi over 6 radians, if I wanted to convert that to degrees, pi over 6 times 180 over pi, 30 degrees. Notice what I was multiplying by. Pi over 180, 180 over pi, reciprocals of each other. So work out some of these problems for conversion between radians and degrees. Get yourself thinking in radians a little bit. And in the next video, we'll talk about some applications of radian measure.